objectives of the Malin project is to propose a framework able to predict the effect of migration on labor supply in the European Union. What we already know from the economics literature is that the effect of migration in the destination countries is to increase the diversity of the, of the, of the skills that are supplied in the labor market. But what we also know is that this massive phenomenon is making uh, your, the destination countries, particularly in Europe, a melting pot of people coming from different origins, different linguistic and cultural backgrounds. And of course, this phenomenon is increasing the, the frequency of interactions between migrants from different backgrounds and between uh, migrants and natives. Where do these interactions take place? Well, these interactions take place, of course, in the labor market, but we, they, will, uh, they also take place into the uh, families that migrants will form with other migrants or with natives. It is true that to value the contribution of migrants to their destination economy, we have to take into account these interactions um, between migrants and, and natives on the labour market, but also within, within families. Why is it the case? Mainly because those interactions are important channels through which uh, migration affects uh, labor supply. The key determinants and the key channels we want to uh, study are related to family formation. So they relate to uh, the decision on marriage, with who we marry and when, uh, how many children we have inside those families, uh, what is the education of the children we will decide, and um, uh, how do we allocate tasks within households. Um, the thing is that all those decisions are simultaneous to um, the decision to participate to uh, the labor force uh, and in a sense also how much uh, time I spend in the labor force, how many hours I work each week or each month. Um, the main originality of Malin is to analyze this simultaneity within the context of the recent migration flows uh, to Europe but also within Europe. Work and family decisions uh, um, depend on uh, individual preferences, individual beliefs. Uh, for example, individual preferences for work compared to, to leisure, individual beliefs uh, regarding gender roles in the society, gender roles in the family or, or in the labor market, or other values such as altruism, trust, and so on. Now, what the cultural economics has shown is that these values and preferences are partly rooted into the cultural background of an individual. Right? And migration is a very important phenomenon because migrants, actually, when they move to the country of destination, they export this cultural trade that they, can, they get from their, their ancestry to the country of destination. And these cultural traits are going to affect, of course, um, directly their decision to supply labor, right? but also indirectly the decision to supply labor of natives in the destination country. This is the reason why, if we look at this uh, phenomenon from an aggregate perspective, labor supply decisions that are taken in a completely homogeneous society without migration would be completely different from the decisions that are actually taken in a society in the presence of migration. And this is uh, precisely the point of the Malins project to understand and, uh, the effect of culture on these aggregate decisions and predict the uh, level of uh, long-term supply of labor in the presence of cultural uh, effects. Per se, we, we won't discover new theoretical mechanisms through which migration affects labor supply. In a sense, the economic literature has already documented all those, uh, all those mechanisms. For instance, we know that when a migrant arrives in the destination economy, he or she exports the skills, his or her skills to the, to the economy, and these skills are not necessarily the same as the skills of natives. And so we know that migration uh, enriches uh, the labor supply uh, in the host country. What is missing in the current economic literature is a framework able to uh, encompass all those uh, mechanisms and to evaluate the relative importance of each of those uh, mechanisms and each of those channels. This is exactly what Malins proposed to, proposed to do. And by doing so, Malins will contribute to um, make robust predictions about the effect of uh, migration on labor supply in the five, ten next years, but also 
in the longer run, like in 50 years from now. Well, simply by helping to understand how migration really affects uh, the labor market and the family spheres um, in, uh, in the destination uh, country. Um, a clear advantage of this is to provide more, preci more precise information to policymakers and aid policymakers on such a sensitive issue um, as migration. Um, in fact, if we look at the, uh, the a common criticism that is leveled to economic analysis on the effect of migration on the labor market, is that, is that it kind of neglects the political aspects, family-related aspects, or cultural aspects. These, exactly, these are exactly the aspects that, that uh, we want to incorporate into the analysis. And this will help to gain some more insight on the contribution of migrants to the destination society and to better evaluate the contribution that migrants can give to the development of the, of the labor market uh, of the destination countries.